It's only the second year of the Chase Dawson era, but the playoff push is on. Currently at 6-2 and two here in Week 10, things are looking uh, very good for the Patriots as we move forward. But things could change oh so quickly. We have two games against the Jets, who right now are the biggest rivals to us in this division. All in all, it's going to be interesting to see if we have what it takes to get back into the postseason after taking a step back last year. We very well could have made the playoffs last year, but, you know, we decided to take that step back. And for good reason, it's worked out quite well. The draft went pretty well for us. Free agency went pretty well. And now... Well, now I think it's in our hands whether or not we end up making the playoffs when you look at the schedule that lies ahead. We are coming off of a loss, though, to the Dolphins before the bye week, a relatively frustrating loss against a team that we should have beaten, and that could be the case here as we start off today's episode, again, taking on the 1-7 and seven Vikings. 77 overall, though, as a team, so yeah, they're underperforming. But we should still be able to do the job. And that actually has me concerned that they're as bad as they are when they have this many superstars and the three X factors. This really could be one of the games that we look back on that could have ultimately cost us the division. Maybe even a playoff spot if those two games against the Jets don't go all that well. But we'll see what happens here. Hopefully we can get off to a good start. You saw the beginning of the season, of course, things went well. Last episode, you know, the good for the most part, a little bit hit or miss. It's going to be very intriguing to see how well we do here just to get this first win out of the way and hopefully set the, see, you know, set the table for the rest of this episode. So let's see what we can do here in this opening quarter as the Vikings will take a 3 to nothing lead, make that 6 to nothing at the end of 15 minutes. Let's go to the half as we get on the board. It's a seven to six lead. And Minnesota looked like they were gonna take the lead. They ultimately don't. It's 14-6. I think we either missed a field goal or regardless fell just short of putting up more points, but 14 unanswered heading into halftime. Michelle with the rushing touchdown. Mason Rudolph is their quarterback, by the way. There was a fumble that was recovered by Anthony Barr. They missed a 40-yarder, and then at the end, actually there was a Nikhil Harry 21-yard touchdown pass. At the end, we ended up punting. Okay, that's what I saw. Thought we missed a field goal at the end. Regardless, good bounce back. Let's see what the third quarter has in store for us as we get a field goal in the opening drive. Minnesota responds. We respond with a touchdown. So 24-9 to as we head into the fourth quarter, 24-3 to since that first quarter in scoring. Pretty damn good. Will Lutz with that 43-yard field goal. They hit a 57-yarder. There was another fumble, this time recovered by us, and that led to an Austin Hooper touchdown. Just his second of the season. Let's go through this. This should be over and done with, and after that touchdown, it most certainly will be. Eight yards to Hooper, his second touchdown of the day. Up to three now on the season. It's 31-9. to nine. And we'll see if Minnesota can score here. And they ultimately do. So 31-17 with just under six minutes left. This game should still be over though. And it is at the back, off the back of a very long drive. Where it looks like we intentionally didn't put up points. I'll take it. We go to Minnesota against Ron Rivera and the Vikings. <laughs> And we walk away with the victory. I'll take it. That's a game that we should have won. We did. Very good to see this team winning a game that they really need to win against a downtrodden team who I don't even know what the hell their issues are. Chase Dawson, great game. Absolutely tremendous from him. Sony Michelle over 100 yards rushing. Harris with a couple of carries as well. He did pretty damn good. Receiving wise, Hooper, his best game of the season. Blocking-wise, only one sack allowed, and it wasn't by a lineman. Defensively, Miles Jack, Lawson, and Evans led the way. Lost him with three tackles for loss. Barnett and Tuck also had great games. Three sacks on the day, Lawrence, Tuck, and Lawson. No picks. Will Lutz hit the only field goal that he was asked to make. 31-17. to A slow start out of the gates in that first quarter, but we never looked back from there. So we do get a big time win. We also get some upgrade points. Miles Jack should be making it up to an 87. But I'm going to risk it and try to make him a scheme fit. 
although it's tough. He's never going to hit a 90. I'm going to try to make him a scheme fit. He does go up to an 87, so it was worth it. He's still not a field general by default, though, unfortunately, because pass coverage also went up by one, but still, what a beast. And Isaiah Collins. Uh, God, that's a tough one, actually. Still normal development for him. If he were to go up to star development, I'd try to work him better as a field general, but we'll make him a run stopper and get him up to a 70 overall. Again, a guy that we randomly signed, I believe, at the beginning of last season just to you know have depth options. He's not bad. A 70 is somewhat useful. So I'll take it. We're up to 7-2 and two on the season before we head into our first matchup, and we got a breakout player. Let's go. I know that they changed a lot of breakout player stuff. I think most of it was for coach mode, but we'll see what happens here. Our first of two matchups in the next four weeks against the Jets, who lost last week. So we have a gigantic opportunity here to put this division nearly out of reach as Dion Lewis is back from injury. Do I want to carry four running backs is the question. I don't know if I do. We're going to get Damian Harris in there. Let's go. You know, I think I'll just leave him for now because overall our depth is okay. Third down back. We'll get we'll get Dion a little bit more involved. Me, yeah, I'll put him behind. We'll put him behind, and then yeah, we'll keep Josh Adams there as a depth option. As a power back, we have another upgrade point at least. It's Josh Shields on the O line. As can we get him to be a pass protector? We cannot, but he is up to a 78. Overall, looking pretty good, the rookie left tackle. Again, reworking that O-line, I think, proved to be a pretty good choice as well. We'll pay attention to the breakout player before we get into the game. As far as who we're scouting now, uh, we were on tight ends last I knew. Yeah, okay, we're still on tight ends. Oh, boy, is there anybody else there to look at? Aside from Terrence Abraham, who, again, looks like he could be a beast, Wooden's not bad. It's concerning that he's being listed as a third-round uh, talent. Raymer's a second-round talent, which is a bit surprising. How good's this dude? Eh. I don't think I want to sit here and scout out the rest of these uh, tight ends. I do, but I also know it's not the smartest move because we still do have O-line, D-line, uh, and linebackers to potentially look at. So if we were to take a tight end, it's probably going to be Terrence Abraham. He's probably going to go top 5, top 10 at the least. <sighs> but I can't help but want to I can't help but want to look. It's not a smart move at all. But I'm intrigued. I can't help it. You know, I I'm doing it. I'm wasting points. I'm doing. It. Okay, never mind. Never mind. I will look at these two though. They're both second round talents. Fuck it, we're, we're being thorough. I'm wasting points. You can't stop me. Yeah, I didn't mean to scout that guy, though, so now I really wasted points. Ian Christensen is a blocking option. Ooh. All right, so yeah, not the uh, not the best crop of guys at tight end. That's, that's unfortunate. I'm going to look at these guys for the hell of it. They're all just terrible. <laughs> but we might as well waste points before changing over the scout heading into next week. Screw it. The breakout player, I'm intrigued. I'm hoping for the wide receiver. God, what even is his name at this point? He hasn't been that involved this year. I'm hoping it's Spears because he could be a decent third option for us with how young he is. If he goes up to star, decent chance he gets up to superstar. Time will tell, though. It is Lawson, which is kind of a waste because of how old he is. But if we hold the Jets to less than 75 rushing yards and a rushing touchdown or get lost in two interceptions, two fumbles, two sacks. All right. It's kind of a waste for Lawson, though. It really is, and it sucks, too, because they do have Le'Veon Bell, so it could be tough to shut them down. But... Oh, that's right. Lawson's the uh, D lineman. Where are you, Lawson? There you are. Yeah, he's 27. That is a complete waste. He might go up one overall point by the end of this, so... I'm not too worried if he gets the upgrade. He gets the upgrade. It's against a tough team. Their best players, they're running back. So in terms of shutting them down, yeah, I'm not really... Oh, God, Terrell Godfrey, you're beautiful. I'm not really sure what our chances are of shutting them down. But this is the big game. This is a very big game for the sake of the division. Again, a win here would put us three wins ahead of the Jets. At least two wins still over Miami. 
So hopefully we can keep up the momentum that we built upon with, or, you know, that we that we set up for ourselves. We didn't really build upon momentum because we lost to the Dolphins before we played Minnesota, but you get the point. This should be a solid game for us. Bell only has four touchdowns on the year, though, which means he's due for a big-time game, and we'll see whether or not that's the case. As the Jets take a field goal on their opening drive, and we respond with nothing. It's another slow start out of the gates. Three to nothing, New York. The end of 15 minutes. Can we get on the board here? We cannot. It's a defensive battle, but a touchdown late. You know, minimum. We don't want to say we don't want to say overlooked due to that field goal, the late field goal for the Jets. But we do have a seven to six lead. They do get back to within striking distance. It was. What was it? What was it? They missed a field goal. It was a one-yard touchdown pass to Jake Butt after consecutive completions to Trent Taylor. They hit a 52-yarder to bring it back to a one-point game. We start the second half. Nothing doing offensively. The Jets take the lead 14-7. Now 14-10. As we begin the fourth quarter, so the offense is struggling. The defense needs to come up with a stop here, and they do, but we start this drive at the one. So it'll be very interesting to see if we can get anything out of this drive. We at least make some progress, but not much. Nine minutes left. We really do need a stop, and we don't get it. It's 21-10 in favor of the Jets. Quincy Anunwa with the 46-yard touchdown pass. If we don't get anything on this drive, we're done for. And that is a turnover on downs. Odds are the Jets just won this game. There you go. 24-10 with 118 left. I was tempted to jump in. Didn't kind of regret it because ultimately we put up a very poor performance here against New York. Although, I gotta be honest, let's just throw an interception really quickly. <laughs> Well, let's see if we can cheese it really quickly with Verts. At least try to get something back. It's the Jets, so I have no choice. It's just... It's my pride that I'm playing for. As Dawson's pass strength is not what I thought it was. He is 15 of 25 before that throw. I don't even know why I'm bothering to play here, because this game is very, very clearly over. Even with the, uh... Even with the timeouts... A solid catch and a fumble from Hooper, and this game is over. All right, well, that really uh, that really sums up this game. Damn. Well, that'll uh, that'll do it. That'll do it. The Jets come into New England, Foxborough more specifically, and walk away with a win. And their dreams of winning the division title for this season not done yet. Very disappointing performance from this offense. Dawson, 17-29, 221 yards and a pick, or a, not a pick, but a touchdown. Sony was, eh, we'll say. Trent Taylor led the way. Harry and Hooper, Cooper as well, didn't really do all that much. The O-line struggled a bit more than normal. Defensively, Ricky Sparks, they were all over him today. He had a big game, but still two sacks, the pick from Miles Jack. But ultimately, the offense just couldn't get going. Held to just 10 points by that Jets defense. I don't know if Lawson got the upgrade yet. Again, it's not a big deal if he did because he's 27. Eduardo Roman, though, on the O-line does get a skill point. But that is a pretty rough loss. It really is. That really opens up the division again, especially, too, if Miami managed to win as well, which we don't know yet if they did. Breakout player-wise, Lawson did not get it, so that's fine. I'd put a little bit more emphasis into making sure he got it if it was a younger player, but it's not a big deal for a 27-year-old. So we move on to Week 12, taking on Baltimore. As the Jets are one game back, Miami lost, though, so they are still two games back. The Bills are completely out of it at this point. So another stumble but nothing that we can't recover from as Dexter Lawrence makes it up to an 80 overall. 
Still don't know what the long-term plan is with him on this team. I do know what the long-term plan is for Terrell Godfrey. He is my favorite. <laughs> he is 79 overall at this point. What a goddamn, what a goddamn draft pick, man. I love him. The next Ty Law even wears the reverse number. Scouting-wise, now, O-line, we're pretty much set. I mean, again, finding somebody to replace Isaiah Wynn would be decent. I can't disagree with that. Barnett, I mean, not bad, but getting somebody better would work out. Lawson's still a solid option. D-line or a DT, we're set with Tuck. Linebacker, Abukum's fine. Jack is fine. We do need another major linebacker. I mean, obviously, we're trying to work up Ricky Sparks. Another linebacker wouldn't hurt, though. Uh, I think we're gonna go. I think we're gonna go with the O line. Finding an option to potentially replace Isaiah Wynn isn't a bad way to go. So let's get rid of Moose. And do we have an O line scout? We actually don't. Okay, so. Uh, to the D-line we go. We'll take a look at Kevin Brooks. The O-line will be the last thing that we scout, probably during the free agency period. So, let's see what we can do, shall we? As we'll start off with left end, so Lionel Hill is at the top of the board. And again, we will look at basically everybody. And see what we got. Artavius Leary, you were so close to being worth it. And then you ultimately weren't. How upsetting. Uh, let's go with those two. Vaughn Red, not looking that bad. So with that, again, contracts are not worried about it all that much yet. So with that, we get down to business, taking on the four and six Ravens. And what really, you know, there's a little bit more pressure now to get a win. They have Earl Thomas as an X-Factor. Lamar's still there as a superstar as opposed to an X-Factor. Another high-rated team with a losing record. I'd like to think we can get the win. And really, again, the pressure's on a little bit to get that win. Otherwise, that upcoming game against the Jets is going to be that much more crucial to our season. We're on pace to be a playoff team, but obviously the higher finish, the better for the sake of home field. Although, you know, uh, Gillette hasn't been that kind to us for the most part over the past uh, few seasons since we've begun this series. Well, let's see what we can do here. First quarter against Lamar and the Ravens as they have a 3 to nothing lead, so another slow start for us offensively. Can we answer back? We do. It's 7-3. to three. Make it 7-6. to 14-6, and that score will hold at the half. So we did pretty well there. Sony Michelle with the rushing touchdown. They answered back with a 56-yard field goal. And then a 6-yard touchdown pass to Damian Harris. Sees us where we are right now. We'll go through the third. No score on the opening drive. The Ravens do respond to tie the game, though, as we will start the fourth quarter. Second and four from the 20. We'll see if we can strike here to regain the lead. And we do. 21-14. With 13 minutes left, a 10-yard touchdown pass to Nikhil Harry. Let's see if the defense can get a stop here. They ultimately can as they are forced to punt. They pin us back to the 20. We'll see what the offense can do. The answer, not much. Marlon Humphrey, after a huge running gain, recovers a fumble. They take over at the 37. Just under 9 minutes left, and they convert 7-11 left. Tied at 21 apiece. The 10-yard touchdown pass to Mark Ingram. A very, very disappointing fumble. Could be crucial to how this game plays out as the offense can't get going. Scott pins them back to the 7, but the Ravens are in control. They turn it over. Reggie Choice with the interception. We take over at the 13. Can we seal the deal? Yes, we can. It's 28-21 with 54 seconds left. Two huge turnovers. Damian Harris with the touchdown. And we'll see what happens here. Can the Ravens tie this game up? Oh, God. Let's see if our defense can hold on. Let's do it. Let's watch it. I was going to hold off because I feel like the AI plays worse when you actually watch them. But we'll see what Lamar can do. Can he put a winning drive together or a tying drive as an incomplete pass is out to the left? 220 yards, two touchdowns, but a crucial 
interception thrown on their last drive. 50 seconds left. They're at their own 25. Samar rolls out to the right. He's going to take off. He's still going. All the space in the world. He gets it up to the 49 as the clock ticks a little bit, and then they call a timeout. So case in point with the AI still not being all that smart. From the 49, 31 seconds left. One timeout remaining for Baltimore. Lamar on the drop back. Throws out to his left. He's caught, and it is a first down. They're up to the 39. Clock's ticking, and again, they call a timeout with 19 seconds left. Two plays more than likely remain. They're up to the 39, but it's time to air it out. Or don't. Make it easier for us, please. That would be great. Jackson, quick throw out to the left. No gain. A loss of two. Time's up. The Patriots win. 28-21. The AI is so bad. And it genuinely makes me wonder if the people who make this game ever just do what I do with these videos and just watch the AI play from time to time. Because I think it, it, it's telling about a lot of different things with the game. If you just watch the AI play in Madden, in NHL, in FIFA, and you see how they play, it could use some work. That's all I'm saying. It could use some work. Chase Dawson, 22 of 29, 222 yards, two touchdowns, no picks. Two, 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 two. Rushing-wise, Sony Michelle over 100 yards on the day. Damian Harris also had a good game. I was worried if Sony was hurt. He wasn't. Damian was just getting a little bit more involved. Receiving-wise, Cooper led the way in terms of receptions and yardage. Blocking-wise, pretty solid game from the O-line. Ricky Sparks led the way defensively. He's getting involved, which is very, very good to see. And that crucial interception from the second-year man, Reggie Choice, sealed the deal for us. As much as that touchdown did. So, very good stuff. A strong rebound victory. Setting us up for a Week 13 matchup against Pittsburgh. As we're up to 8-3 and three on the season. With five games left. We head down to Pittsburgh to play the 5-6 and six Steelers. Malcolm Butler with an upgrade point. Just in time for the postseason, buddy. Up to a 74 overall for the now 32-year-old. And we'll see what else we have going on here. First of all, standings-wise, still just one game ahead of the Jets. So, yeah. Week 14 and 15, very, very important to what we have going on here. And in terms of the scouting, we'll get this out of the way, of course. We will go back... To the D-line. Good lord. I'd probably prefer him to be a linebacker. I gotta be honest. As opposed to a uh, you know an edge. That's insanity. Robbins. Eh, isn't that great? Tucker's a bit disappointing. Huh. Some disappointments on the line thus far. Especially too when you look at the top three grades. For the top you know, left end. The fact that again he might even be a better suited linebacker than a lineman is uh, somewhat troublesome, but good God. You start off well on the right side here. Uh, we'll go with that and that. Jesus, Tyler McWilliams out of Georgia Tech. Looking pretty good. Again, the pursuit's high up there, which isn't bad. I mean, I'm not saying the pursuit rating is the worst thing to see for an edge, but, you know, you kind of like different grades. At least I would. So, let's do this. We take on the Steelers. Looking for our ninth win of the season. We only have a one overall point advantage on them. Juju's still leading the way. Damon Harrison's there. DeCastro, TJ Watt, Devin Bush, and Emmanuel Thurman as their superstars. So we do have the advantage on that front. But another game against a good team with a losing record. Let's see what we can do. If we lose this and the Jets win, that next matchup becomes oh. So important, especially if we lose. The Jets will have a one-game lead in the division, and they would have beaten us twice. So that would be fairly devastating. Gotta be honest, that would be pretty damn rough. But hopefully, we can avoid that situation, get a win here, and we won't have to worry about a thing. So, 
Let's see what we can do in the land of poorly programmed tree JPEGs. As you see in the background, we do have the 7 to nothing lead through the opening 15 minutes. It was, after a slow start, an 8-yard touchdown pass to Amari Cooper. We will go to the half as Pittsburgh ties it up. We respond with a touchdown of our own. And Pittsburgh, with a late touchdown, ties this at 14 apiece. So, not tremendous. But very much in it. Nikhil Harry with that six-yard touchdown. We will go through the third opening drive. We get a field goal out of it. Pittsburgh responds with a touchdown. And they have the lead for the first time today. 21-17 at the start of the fourth quarter. As we are forced to punt, ends up being a touchback, and the Steelers score here, we're in a bit of trouble. And ultimately they do. It's 24-17, to just under nine minutes left, with the 34-yard field goal from Brandon McManus being good. Holy hell, that happened quickly. Trent Taylor, 75 yards on third and 10. We have a tie game at 24 apiece. Trent Taylor has done very well for us over the past season or so. Well, we are tied, just under eight minutes left. Let's see what the Steelers can do on this drive. It's a touchdown. 31-24, Benny Snell gets it in from two yards. We need something on this drive, desperately. Let's see what happens, because this is, this is it right here. I mean, again, this could set the stage for a very important game against the Jets next week. Quick throw out to the left, and a good pickup, broken tackle! He could potentially go all the way he gets caught at the 12. Unbelievable Trent Taylor. Jesus Christ. Welker and Edelman reborn. It's Trent Taylor. Breaking the tackle on the sideline and bringing it back all the way to the 12. Breaking two tackles, really three. I don't know what 22 was doing there. That was insane. <laughs> Trent Taylor with the big time play that we needed. That brings us up to the 12 with 2.43 left in regulation. Dawson looking, scanning, throws out to his left, caught. And it'll be a pickup of three. Steps out of bounds to stop the clock, though. Second and seven coming up. Can Dawson cap off this drive after a huge play from Trent Taylor? The handoff, broken tackle, but ultimately he stopped at the nine, and that'll set up a huge third down. Will we hit the two-minute warning before then? We won't. Here we go. Third and seven. Dawson brings the man back. The handoff. Michelle's going to be stopped. God, I want to take over. They're so dumb. Oh my God, a gigantic fourth down. A gigantic fourth and eight from the nine. It might as well be goal. Dawson from the shotgun. Hands it off again. He's going to be short. Oh my God. <laughs> it's so dumb. You don't throw it with Dawson there more than once. What are we, the fucking Jaguars? Jesus Christ. <sighs> Pittsburgh starts at the five. Handoff. Ultimately stopped after a loss of just one. I mean, we're not out of it, but what a waste of that tremendous play from Trent Taylor. <sighs> Second and 11 from the four. A safety here would be phenomenal. Man in motion for Pittsburgh. He'll line up as a fullback. The handoff stopped at the line. Big third and 11 coming up here from the four. This game's not over yet. A first down here, though, would end it, but you're likely looking at a run here, as I think they're going to run the same exact play. Indeed it is. The run out to the left, he stopped at the line. So we'll have one more chance, but it burns our timeouts. And we'll see what Dawson and company can do on this drive. We need a good punt return here due to the lack of timeouts. The punts successfully sent. Recovered at the 37 and immediately tackled at the 44. 
That's John Ross on the return, if I'm not mistaken. It should be. He's our number one. Let's see what Dawson can do. How crucial is this game against the Jets next week going to be? Play action. Rolls out to his right. Throw over the middle is nearly intercepted. And really, it should have been. <sighs> nervous, nervous energy right now. Dawson. Takes the snap, throws out, caught over the right-hand side. He's up to the 32. I honestly thought it was picked again. Ah, the no huddle. Ball up to the 32. Dawson. Throws out to his right. Can't find Taylor. It ends up hitting the turf. Might be for the best. Taylor probably only would have gotten a couple yards here or there on the play. Second and ten. Dawson. Looking. Throws over the middle. It's caught by Trent Taylor! Let's go! Trent Taylor does it again. You just can't tackle him. He's a cheat code. The Patriots tie this game. All the point after is not good. Horrific tackling. <laughs> this game. Oh, this game giveth. This game taketh. Trent Taylor taketh to the house. It's a one-point game. Oh, my God. Can we get this? Mr. Lutz, I will... Fucking sack your ass right now if this isn't good. It is. We are tied at 31 apiece. Trent Taylor said, fuck it. You can't take advantage of what I did before. I'll take it all the way to the house. And with one minute left, this game is tied. The Steelers, though, with all three timeouts and plenty of opportunity to get down in the field goal range and win this game. Shotgun here, throw out to the right! Just broken up, I thought that was a chance to be an interception. They have Kirk Cousins as their quarterback. I was wondering who it was. Hope that makes you feel good about uh, the situation right now, Steelers fans. But we'll see what Cousins can do. Big second down here. Hand off, run up the middle. There's gonna be a face mask. A nightmare situation there. Pittsburgh runs it. And there's a huge penalty on Justin Evans that gets the Steelers into relatively decent field position up to the 48. That is a massive mistake by Justin Evans. We'll see what Cousins can do here. From the shotgun, throw out to the left is broken up. Thank God. That would have been the game right there. Huge second down. 49 seconds left. The Steelers with all three timeouts still. Cousins in the empty backfield. Let's see what he can do. Quick throw out to his right. Caught, but not much of a pickup. That does get them into Patriots territory. It'll be third and five. Zay Jones on the catch. And this is it right here. Patriots desperately need a stop. Cousins with the drop back. Looking throw over the middle. It's caught. And that face mask penalty on Justin Evans is going to haunt us unless the AI botches this situation. They do call a timeout. And this game is likely over. Justin Evans. I mean, you can't blame him alone, but that was a brutal, brutal mistake. The handoff here tackled quickly as they call a timeout again. Which doesn't make any sense, but again, that's EA logic. So it's a big second down. I mean, as long as they run it, there's a chance of a fumble. This game might not be over yet. The run out to the left, brought down at the 30, and they're letting the clock run. Oh my god, are they not going to call it? Okay, son of a bitch. We got so close. So here we go. Huge moment here. Oh god, five seconds left to win it all. The kick is up. The kick is short! We're going to overtime! <laughs> oh my god! A shanked field goal. I guess you can't say shanked when it's short. But the Steelers just completely botch it. I mean, I, I guess they didn't. They got him in the good field position. The kicker just, it, it's short. By a decent amount. I can't believe that. They got him up to the 37. The kick is short. Dawson is going to air it out. Is there a miracle? Is there a miracle? I thought he had it. 
Oh my god, I thought, I think that was Amari Cooper. I swear to god, I thought Cooper had that in his hands and was about to walk it in. We're going to overtime. A ridiculous end to that fourth quarter. Who will get the first possession? The answer is the Patriots. So a huge, huge opportunity to win this game here in Pittsburgh. Unreal. The missed field goal and a second chance at life after that really detrimental face mask penalty on Evans. And we will see if Dawson can lead the team to victory here in overtime. This kick will not be a return, so we'll start at the 25. Can the second-year pro lead the team to victory? We have over 500 yards of offense in this game. It's going to take a little bit more, though, to get the job done. Dawson, quick handoff and a run up the middle. Sony Michelle taking off for the first down. It's a pickup of 12. Hell of a run there from, uh, from Michelle. You would have seen, of course, the rushing yards. We haven't had a great game from that standpoint, but a good start there from Sony. Again, that gets us up to the 37. Another handoff and a sweep out to the left. Space for Michelle into field goal territory. Two huge runs from Sony Michelle to start off this overtime. We're up to the 37 off of those two plays alone. Huge moment there from Michelle. The 37, of course, from which their kicker missed the potential winning field goal. Drop back from Dawson. Throw over the middle. And a decent, uh, actually not really a decent pickup. Really nothing there. It's only going to be second and nine. He dropped back further than I thought he did. Jake Butt on the reception. We'll see what happens here. Second and nine. Dawson the handoff. Michelle is devoured. And a huge third and 11 from the 38. Damon Harrison on the tackle. And a huge, huge moment here. Dawson will throw. Over the middle, it's caught and fumbled by Cooper. A sure thing of a first down. Was it Cooper or Hooper? I guess it was Hooper. A sure thing of a first down. Austin Hooper with another fumble this year. I'd argue that isn't even a fumble. I'd argue that's an incomplete catch. How many steps did he take? I think that's an incomplete catch, man. Also, that animation was hilarious. Please let that be challenged. Please. I guess not. I was hoping for a booth review. It didn't happen. The Steelers have a chance to win it. Quick handoff out to the left. One broken tackle. A couple of broken tackles. He's eventually smothered, though. Back at the line of scrimmage. Connor on the carry. An unbelievable situation there. We've seen Hooper fumble it twice today. I mean, granted, the first one was against the Jets, and that game is already over, but this is a crucial moment. Another throw out to the left. This one will hit the turf. And already we have a huge third and 11 from the 22 here for the Steelers. We need a big play from the defense. Can we get it? Cousins looking. Throw over the middle. Wide open man. Up to the 49 of the Patriots. And that could be the game. We're looking at two brutal mistakes. And ultimately, that huge play there for the Steelers' offense on 3rd and 11 puts them in a situation to win this game. Throw out to the right for Cousins, and they're just shy of the target line. It's 2nd and 4 from the 43. This is going to be a heartbreaking loss if it doesn't go our way. We had chances to win it. Throw over the middle. It's caught. First down, Pittsburgh. At the 38, this defense just not getting it done right now against Kirk Cousins, of all people. First and 10 from the 38, move to an empty backfield. Cousins takes the snap, looking, throws out to the right. Tackle is made at the 38, so no pickup there. Second and nine, with under five and a half minutes left in this overtime. And an empty backfield here. Cousins looking. Throws out to the left. It's intercepted. <laughs> no, it's not. He throws in the quadruple coverage. And ultimately, it just doesn't work out. Third and nine here, though. Cousins will throw. Looking out to his left. There's going to be a pickup. 
but he's taken down at the 34. <sighs> so many big moments that ultimately go against us, and a chance here for redemption. Can Pittsburgh hit this kick? We ultimately ice him. Will it be another huge missed field goal, or will our chance to steal this victory in the Steel City slip away from us? The kick is up. The kick is good. Pittsburgh wins. A thriller. And that puts us into a brutal situation heading into this next week's matchup against the Jets, where it could very well be for the top spot in the division. We had chances to win it. You know, we blow it on that first chance, missing it on the fourth down conversion. We get the ball back. Taylor sends us to overtime. We waste the opening drive. A huge fumble from Hooper. And that sets up the winning field goal. A big third down conversion from Pittsburgh. And that, again, is a heartbreaking loss. Chase Dawson was solid, but two picks ultimately. Scott had a fake punt for a 23-yard conversion. Sony was okay. But what we're going to remember this for is the Austin Hooper fumble. Just not what we needed. Trent Taylor had a monster game. But that fumble from Hooper. And defensively, we just couldn't get the stops when we needed to. And again, a huge chance for an interception there at the end. And we just didn't come up with it. Pittsburgh wins, and the big question is going to be whether or not the Jets did as well. But that is a really frustrating loss against a team that we should have beaten in a game that we should have won. Derek Barnett with an upgrade point. He makes it up to an 81 overall. Plus two tackling and awareness. And a Reggie Choice inching that much closer to an 80 overall. He's up to a 79 Plus two man coverage. The highlight there for the 23-year-old superstar. One overall point away from an ability slot. We sit at 8-4, and four, heading into week 14. The Jets at 7-5. and five. We've slipped up, but as long as we regain our composure and our footing heading into these final four games, we should be okay but not exactly a banner episode for us here today.